Hey, good evening. It's uh, Thursday, November 10th. We're inside today because we're uh, experiencing the uh, impact of the remnants of uh, Tropical Storm Nicole here in South Carolina. And so rather than fight the wind and the rain and all that, I just thought I'd be inside today. And uh, welcome to Everyday Talk 24-7. We're going to begin three-part series on how to respond to stressful people. How to respond to stressful people. Because I hear that a lot in terms of people talking to me. I read about it and I hear, I hear other people talking. We get stressed out by people. But the important thing to remember here is that <clears throat> the people are the not causing the stress. It's our reaction to those people that is causing the stress. That's huge. The stressful person really is not the one causing the stress. It's our response to that person. And God has given us clear, helpful, powerful ways to respond to someone who we believe is causing stress in our lives. And these three ways are found in a portion of scripture called the Beatitudes. And we tend to take the scripture and devalue it when we spiritualize it. So we'll take something like the beautiful section that Jesus begins his teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, and the call of Beatitudes. We put them in a nice little neat spiritual box. We put them on a wall, and we memorize them and say those things back. And then we take that, and we just shove it aside. And we don't make it a part of our everyday life. That's not what Jesus intended. He taught this thing on a hillside to people who were gathered around him, not in a church service, but wanting to hear truth. Some weren't even sure that he was the Messiah. They wanted to check him out. But nevertheless, it was about the practical application of life. And so Jesus starts off this teaching on his Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon ever told, ever spoken. And he says a number of things that we are blessed with. The people of God are richly blessed. But we discard those blessings. And we don't use them in day-to-day -day life, which is exactly what God intended. And I think we can pull three of these out, and they can give us a powerful way to address situations which might be involved in quote-unquote stress and quote-unquote stressful people. So the first one is right at the beginning, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We tend to put false narratives and false understandings. So we see poor in spirit meaning someone who was beaten down, run over by people, uh, taken advantage of, but just kind of taking, taking one for, this, for the Lord and having no power. When in fact, it is the exact opposite. These Beatitudes will give you strength, will give you power. As Paul says, power that raised Jesus from the dead. The Greek word is dynamo, it says dynamic, boom. That's what Jesus is giving us here when he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Essentially what that means is that you are someone who was not standing up for your rights, you're standing up for the honor of God. You see, when their stress occurs, I'm really upset that that person is doing something unkind and sensitive, or I can't believe how this person is being a pain all the time. And we make it all about us. I can't believe they're doing that. I can't believe they're being that selfish. I can't believe that they just want and want and want. And we make it all about us. And what Jesus is teaching us it needs to be all about God. Just a few lines later in the in the in this sermon, seek first the kingdom of God, and all the other stuff will come to you. 
Don't seek first to make yourself happy. Seek first to honor God and his kingdom. So let's look at this practically. This means that when you're in a situation with a stressful person, you don't have to stand up for your rights. You stand up for God's honor. Being poor in spirit is coming from a position of power and strength. It's not making the stressful person, quote unquote, the focus of your attention. It's making the honor of God the focus of your attention. So being poor in spirit means that you pursue what brings honor to God in light of the person's actions. If they're whining, if they're complaining, I don't let that control me. I respond to them in a way that God is calling me to. Sometimes that is just, you know, being very helpful and not responding in an angry voice, returning good for evil. Sometimes it's standing up and saying, no, I can't do that. Not because of me, but because God says I can't do that. Now that might make the quote, person giving you stress very upset. But if you're doing what God has called you to do, that's where your peace is. That's where your hope is. You see that. So we want to be thinking first, not about bringing honor to myself, not protecting myself, not getting back at this stressful person, but what's going to bring honor to God here? I don't have to be swept away by them. I can find the path that God has called me to. There is a response given to us by the Spirit of God who resides within us, who works with this word <clears throat> to give us hope. <clears throat> so what that means is, being poor in spirit is, I'm not about protecting myself, which is the person who's causing you stress is attacking you. I don't have to worry about that. I just have to be concerned what is going to honor God here? That may be something which makes a stress, stressed out person great, gives them great peace and you've got a great victory there. Or they may get angry with you because you're honoring God instead of them. But you've taken the focus away from that other person and their stress and placed it on where it needs to be, bringing honor to God. That's being poor in spirit, doing what brings honor to God instead of bringing honor to yourself. When we get involved in these relational conflicts with our stress, I'm concerned about how can I deal, placate that other person. If I'm doing it for the honor of God, then I realize that there's things in this book which will give me strength and power to do what is going to bring honor to God, and I can just let the chips fall. Because I know I'm doing the thing that brings God peace. And again, so many of my videos about exactly how to do that. But that's this first one. It's a liberating factor. Being poor in spirit means that I don't focus on giving honor to the person who's causing me so much trouble. But I'm focused on bringing honor to God. That's power in spirit. That's poor in spirit. And that see is the kingdom of God is mine you see that's the beautiful thing about that about that first beatitude I've already been given the kingdom I have more riches than I can ever imagine once they can't be taken away I just have to have the faith to believe that that person causing all the hassle they can't take that away from me I have the kingdom of heaven. That cannot be taken. See, that's my hope in dealing with stress and stressful people. This is part one. Tomorrow we'll look at uh, part two. These are just such beautiful, liberating truths. Again, give me some thoughts, feedback. Love to hear your response to this. I pray that this will begin to liberate you from dealing with the folk, the pressure of stressful folks. 
Uh, again, check us out every day at talk247.com. If you haven't subscribed, turn on post notifications. Videos will come right to you. And tomorrow, Lord willing, we'll look at part two of how to respond to stressful people. You have a great evening. See you soon. Bye-bye.